Did you know the most expensive RV to ever sell was sold in 2017 in Dubai for $3 million? Yeah, no, that's crazy. We've got deep pockets and short arms. <laughs> and if you think that's crazy, we've got a couple of other crazy RV facts that we're going to hit you with as we travel to our next location. We've been staying at this campground called Potter's Creek. It's an Army Corps of Engineers campground. If you want more details about it, make sure you pop over to last week's video where we talk about the campground prices and all that stuff. In the meantime, let's do another RV fact. I was going to do it outside with Phil because he is dumping the tanks because there's no sewer here, but it's so windy outside you guys would never hear what I was saying. So the next crazy RV fact is the very first RV was built in 1904 out of a car. From here, we're going to go fill up. We actually are at about a half a tank on our diesel and we are one tick down on our death. And ever since our death issue, yeah. and I can link that video below where we thought we were going to be dead in the water, Phil does not let the death go below that. And actually it's been one tick low for a little bit and he doesn't even like that. No, every, every forum that I read and every person that I talked to, to include Freightliner guys, said, keep it topped off. So. I'm going with what the pros and what I've been reading and it's been working for us. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so that means we're going to go out of our way by about 30 minutes so we can go and fill up with fuel, use our open roads card, get the little discount, fill up on def and make sure that we don't go another tick down on our def tank. Yeah, no, that's uh, in my book, no bueno. So we're, it's, it's working. So we're going to do that. All right, and before we pull away, one last crazy fact. In 2001, the RV industry hit over $140 billion with a B, billion. I'd like to think we had a hand in, in that by, by traveling in our Tiffin. If we did have a hand, hand in that, where's our cut? Yeah, we did have a hand because <laughs> Phil, let me tell you, is buying gadgets and, yeah. and RV supplies and new stuff. So yeah, I'm sure <laughs> some of those dollars were ours. Yeah. 140 billion. That's, That's crazy. crazy. And we're about to be stacked up because he's coming in too. We finally made it to a pump here at the TA. You can see Phil's going out to fill us up. And it is always like a drum whirl as we wait to see how much money we're going to save with our open roads cart. Phil said he thought this one was going to be about a buck a gallon. So we'll see about that. Here's another crazy RV fact. Vacations are 60% cheaper when taken in an RV versus traditional vacationing. 11 million households own RVs in the United States, and that is up 60% since 1980. All right, the moment everyone is waiting for, what did it cost us? Well, let's see if it'll show up. It should. Yeah. We saved, dang! <laughs> we saved 45.57 on a 50 gallon fill up. Nice. Oh, 98 cents per gallon discount. Wow. So it was 476 at the pump. We pay ended up paying 374 a gallon. Nice, that's definitely a win. I'll take that. All right, so if you yeah. don't have the uh, fuel card, I will put a link down below and you can get more information about it. Yeah, it's, only for, it's only for use at truck stops and so it's only for diesel right now. That's definitely an open roads win and we were finally able to fill up with depth. So we are headed to our next stop, which is a harvest host. And of course, it's our favorite kind, a brewery. We've had a quick change of plans. We are one exit away from a Bucky's and Texas law is you do not pass a Bucky's without stopping. So we're gonna stop, get a little snack, get a little unsweet tea and be back on the road. Woo -woo! This Bucky's used to be the largest one and the largest convenience store in the U.S. It has 66,000 square feet. 
and we managed to get two brisket sandwiches. <laughs> but now Tennessee actually has the largest Bucky's and convenience store at 74,000 square feet. But don't you worry, Texans, they are building a new Bucky's that's going to be 76,000 square feet. <laughs> so we're, we'll be taking the rain back again. Everything truly is bigger in Texas. <laughs> we made it to our next destination, which is a harvest host. So I am going to run in and find out exactly where they want us to park because we never really know and this one's a tight one yeah this one is a little tight actually i'm a little worried about phil taking this left around here so let's go see where they want us they may want us around back but i saw a picture online where they park right in front so you can see with the curb it's going to be a little tight pulling in and oh it looks like there's a sign in the back and there's already an rv back here so i'm not really sure where they want us so let's find out all right we've been given two options for parking one is all the way forward of the business and it literally is right along the street and the other one we're going to check it out and see if it's a better option it's between two businesses so i think it might be not as loud because we're going to be really close to the road Just got set up. Now we're gonna head over and sample the the cold beverages. We were gonna let you guys know how we decided which spot, but it's so noisy you wouldn't have heard a thing we said, so we skipped it all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just know that we got a decent spot and the backside of the other business is next to the harvest house, so we're gonna go over um, now and check it out. You can see Greg is somewhere behind us. There we go. And there's another rig up here, a solitude, that yeah. is also staying here at the brewery tonight. And we figured we'll give you a fun fact along the way. All right, hit me with a crazy RV fun fact. So did you know 40 million people in the U.S. RV annually? No wonder we can't get into campgrounds. <laughs> right? No, I'm just kidding. No, that's true. That's very true. That's a lot of people. So um, if you are one of the 40 million RVers out there, how you doing? Maybe we'll run into you. <laughs> yeah, how you doing? We're packing it up from this harvest host. You can see. Can you tell what day it is? Yeah. Although they are not having one of their better years, I've learned to embrace the suck and it's still <laughs> football Sunday. So Phil's prepping for the football game today and then we are packing up and heading out of this harvest host But I thought you guys might be interested in seeing the best part of the harvest host Which we didn't share with you guys last night. Let's face it the beer garden here at the Bandera Brewery is the best place to be ton of fun to be had outside on a nice warm summer day So if you're in this area pop in and hit them up on your next harvest host overnight And if you're thinking about joining harvest host we are affiliates So we do have a link below where you can save 15% all the time But this is December and harvest host usually has some smashing December deals I'm not sure what it's gonna be yet But I'll put it right here as soon as it comes out and I will drop the link below so you can save big in December the longer I take over here, the more Phil's gonna pack up in my absence. So let's go ahead and toss out another crazy RV fact. Did you know that Winnebago was the very first RV manufacturer to use the assembly line to build their RVs? So they opened their first assembly line in 1967, and this enabled them to drop their prices to 50% of their competitors. Last night we were talking to the owners of the brewery and he said that he, how grateful really he was for Harvest Host. And he said Harvest Host kept them going during COVID. So he said without them, he really doesn't know what they would have done. And that's one of the things we really love about Harvest Host is knowing that we are hitting up some mom and pops, we're giving them some love and we're really helping those small businesses thrive. So while I was over there at the brewery, you think Phil finished everything? Maybe I won't have to do any packing up at all because he's all done. We done? Yeah. We're good. All we got to do is fire it up, close it up, lift up the jacks, and boogie. Oh, good. I should go walk around more often. Maybe you should. <laughs> As I get ready to close up the slides and bring the jacks up here, I wanted to hit you with another crazy RV fact. In 1931, Wally Byam started Airstream in his garage. 
But it was only when his neighbors started complaining of the noise did he open up a factory. How wild is that? All right, so we've come into a little problem. We were trying to bring up our jacks so we could get ready to roll, and our RV thinks our jacks are already up, which they are not. And as you can see, there's no alarms on. There's nothing saying that they're up or down. I can't even manually move the jack, so we're going to have to do some kind of reset. The front two jacks are up about two inches or so. The back passenger is down, and the rear driver's side passenger looks like it's slightly up. So it looks like they started to come up and then stopped. The alarm just started going off. Yeah, the warning so, that the jacks are down. So maybe yeah, now. So we probably had to wake it up. Well, maybe now we can uh, move or put them where they're supposed to be. And this is the prime reason why you have to do a walk around before you go because the RV said the jacks were up and they clearly were not. So let's see if I can actually get them to do something now. And so let's see. You're going to do an auto store? Uh, let's or auto, auto level. level. No, it's not doing anything. Mm -mm. Didn't we do some kind of battery set one time? There it goes. Oh, there we go. There okay. it goes. All right. It's going now. So now it should auto level, right? We just did auto level to re level yeah. it. Yeah. To cycle it through. Yeah. So it just dumped all the air and. We should start leveling now. So it just, let me get the good side here. So it just dumped all the air, so it's going to auto level again. And we're gonna try and see if we can reset it that way. It just pushed it to this, I don't think it's, yeah, it's pushing, oh no. The, the passenger side is pushing up. Yeah, we are, wait, oh, the jacks are off the ground. It's got a mind of its own this morning. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. So we're gonna to have to totally reset it. Yeah, the front's coming up. Yeah, they're, these are coming up. Phew. Yeah, they're they're storing now. So let me do a walk around and make sure they're all coming back up. That was a little weird. Yeah, this one's all the way up now. And the back driver's side is almost up. So, all right, I think we I think we righted the ship. You know what the problem was? I bet you. You know what the problem was? What? I did it. You didn't do it. And it doesn't, you don't know what you're doing, is that what you're saying? <laughs> hey, we're supposed to know each other's jobs, I know. inside and out. So I closed up the jack or the slides like normal, and then I came over and hit auto store, and I came out to double check my back slide, because it's a little cattywampus right now. Um, needs to be resynced, I think. So it was, the back um, driver's side slide was sticking out about two inches. So I went back in, pulled it out a little bit, and then brought it back in, and it seated just fine but I noticed there was nothing happening with the um, jacks. So I kind of was like, hmm. And then that's when we noticed we were in travel mode. So it, so it didn't know what it was supposed to be doing. They should be up by now. The yeah. lights are still on. They're not coming all the way up. All right, let me go see. These are all the way up here. Let me check the passenger side. The computer it's, says they're not. Yeah, it's cycling. I can hear it doing something that's not norm. Hear it? Yeah, I hope we don't have a leak in our in our uh, fluid. Let me check the bay. Yeah, these are up. They're all the way up. Every, everything inside the hydraulic bay looks right. The levers are up, um, but it's definitely cycling. I can hear it. Yeah, it's definitely something. I, yes, go ahead. I hear it. So the lights on top of the solenoid were flashing, and I could hear it like cycling. And the lighting's not good, so I couldn't show it to you. Um, and it's a little dirty in there. All right, let's see. She just turned it off and turned it back on, so maybe reset. Okay. It's not cycling now. I 
I need to go. I need to get. Hand me my flashlight. I can't really see in there. I don't think we have a leak, but the the lights on top of the solenoids were flashing every time it cycled. So I wonder if it just had a little. If it's a little cold. If it had a little hiccup. No, we're dry. There's nothing leaking that I could see. All right, I'm gonna have to do some uh, some research on this once we get to where we're going today, um, just to make sure everything is where it should be. All right, I think we're good to go now. Yeah, no alarms are going off. All right, it's showing we're in travel mode. I've visually checked all four jacks. They're up. Time goes on and seasons change. It's these moments that remain. And no matter where I go, I always hold him close. It's a long, 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 long and winding road. It's a long. made it to our site now we're going to drop the jacks auto levelers and see if it does what it's supposed to do hit it nothing nothing it's not even beeping when you hit it, well, it should be. when you hit it it'll lower so it didn't even dump the air Correct. yeah we we've got a problem she hit the button and nothing happened like i can't even manually all right let's see uh, it's good there. I didn't see any lights on. Try it again. Nothing. And you can't manually dump it? No, I already tried. I turned it off? All right, we're still trying to troubleshoot our jacks. We turned off the RV and turned it back on so it can cycle through. And um, I was able to hit the auto level and it dropped all the air. It dumped the air, but the jacks themselves are not going down. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, I don't. We don't think it's the fluid because we are able to open the front so slides, which also use that same fluid. So it's not that we have trouble with that in the past. So what'd you say? Look, there's a light. This light is on here. A warning light. Here it, it's yeah. trying. I turn it off. The RV off. Yeah, turn it off again. I still hear the transfer switch cycling, so it's weird that that one light came on. So I wonder if that's if there's something wrong with that one. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to Google it. And when you turn on the turn the key, are there any indications on the dash? Any warning lights or anything? I didn't see anything. I didn't watch it. So. All right. When you start it this time, look and make sure there's nothing on the dash. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right, as you can hear, the alarm is going off, which means our jacks are down. We are no longer in drive mode. What I eventually did was I just kept cycling through on the jacks, and I got it to register the auto store. I heard it cycling through the auto store, and then I hit auto level again, and they dropped and went through their normal cycle. So we're not really sure what happened, but we are going to do a little research and see what we can come up with. Now that we have the RV all set up, Phil's tucking the bikes into the bike cover. I figured we would give you the some more cool RV facts. The average RV owner is 48 years old. And Phil, can you guess how many days a year the average RV owner actually takes their RV out? 25 days. Ooh, pretty good. Pretty good. 28 to 35 days oh, a year. So that was pretty close. And the average RV owner actually drives how many miles in their RV? How many miles? A year or? Yeah, a year. Um, I'd say... 2,500, somewhere around there. 4,500 is the average miles okay. for a, an RVer. And the, the, you know, the simple truth is most people who own RVs do work a regular nine to five. Yes. Only about 1.5% of RVers actually travel full-time in their RV. So it's actually a really low percentage of full-timers. And that's why we didn't own one when we were working full-time. Yeah. yeah. We didn't have true. time. We didn't have the time off. And when we did have time, it was mostly a week to two weeks. And we were trying to get there. 
and come home enjoy yeah. and then come back as fast we didn't have the leisure time to drive as slow as we wanted so that's right that's why it didn't work for us so we have a ton more rv facts over on the blog so if you want to hit up a few more of these cool interesting facts i'll put a link down below <laughs> for the blog yeah it's, it's interesting i didn't some of those things were just kind of you know yeah, and I do have all the sources. Um, I've cited all the sources for all this info on the blog as well. So if you're curious where I got the info from, if you head to the blog, you'll see all the links. Yeah, you just find it on the internet. Yeah, right? everything's true on the internet. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln said that. That's right.